How do you build a 900-unit portfolio, folks? How do you get from 0 to 900? I've done it, and my client Dan from Florida has done it. Let's talk about it. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. James Wise here in today's show. Very special, right? Today's show is very inspiring. I'm working with my guy, Dan. He's an investor down there in Bonita Springs, Florida, right? And Dan has, over the years, amassed a portfolio of 900 units, right? Where I even wrote this down. You're in Texas. You're in Minnesota. You got rentals down there in Florida. And you got at least 75 up here in the Cleveland market, right? So how did you get from zero to 900 units? Well, folks... He got there the same way everybody else does. He got there by buying the first deal, and then the second, and then the third, and then the fourth, and it just kind of snowballs, right? So if you're interested in getting a portfolio, it doesn't have to be a 900-unit portfolio, right? It could be a 5-unit a portfolio, a 10-unit, a 20-unit, right? You got to start with one, and you do so by working with me one-on-one, -on -one, right? So after the show... Go ahead and click the notes below. Book a free call. My team will get you working with us one-on-one. -on -one. Because the property I'm looking at for Dan today, this will be rental number 901 in his portfolio. But I sent this video to him months ago. So you guys do not have the opportunity to bid on this, right? So if you want to work with me one-on-one -on -one like Dan is doing, become a big dog investor like Dan, you need to book that call at my team. And as for you, Dan, what we're focusing on for you, number 901, baby, you're looking for high-end Airbnb rentals up in Cleveland, Ohio. And I got one for you, brother. I looked at this one a couple weeks ago. Uh, fell off the market. They actually switched real estate agents, popped it back on the market. This sucker's ripe. It's ready for you. Needs some big money player uh, to take it down and make a ton of money. I think you're going to dig it. I'll leave you with that footage, and then you let me know what you want to do. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise. Real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Now is the juicy part of the show, right? The, the juicy part, where we actually get into the real deals, crunch the numbers for real. This, this is a sweet property, okay? Check this out. Newer build, right? This, I wrote it down. It was built in like 05 or 06, right? Somewhere in there. Now, that means it does not have a new construction tax credit, okay? There's no tax abatement. It would have to be brand new. But if it was brand spanking new, we'd probably be paying like 500 k for it. We're not going to do that. Now, here's the thing. This property... It looks like it's like set up as a townhouse, but there's no HOA, none of that stuff, which is good. We want to avoid that stuff when we're doing short-term rentals, right? Because the HOAs, you know, they have the ability to write rules, change rules with votes, and you don't want to get into an investment. Find you can't do short-term rentals, number one. Number two, you don't want to get into investment that you can do short-term rentals, but out of your control since you don't have the majority of votes in the HOA down the road, they, you know, make it illegal for you to do, right? You don't want the HOA. HOA getting in your way, right? So this one, no HOA, which is good. Sweet looking deal, super modern construction. We're like right downtown in Tremont, right? And that's really cool because one of the highlights of this property is how tall it is. It's three stories and it's got that badass rooftop deck, right? You got your rooftop deck and you got this deck too, right? So like this is a pretty high deck and then this thing huge, right? You're like four stories up somewhere like that. I mean, that's sweet. Uh, well, three stories. I don't know. So your first story, fourth, first story is your garage. So then I guess that would be on the second story. Yeah, three or four. I don't know. You're freaking high up, man. And you got sweet views of downtown. Look at that. That's perfect, right? And since we're doing short-term rentals, folks, this is, this is what we're selling, right? We are selling this, right? We are selling the Indian Stadium. 
Sorry, Wokies. The Guardian Stadium now, right? We are selling the Cleveland Browns. We are selling the Q. We are selling the casino. We are selling the Hard Rock Cafe. We are selling all types of stuff, right? Those are the touristy stuff that people do when they come to Cleveland. You're right freaking there. In addition, Tremont, you hear about the resurgence in Cleveland, right? Tremont, it's like one of the hottest neighborhoods, right? In addition to that, we are incredibly close to multiple hospitals, Metro, University, uh, Cleveland Clinic, right? So what that does is that attracts us uh, short-term rentals for, like, uh, contract nurses, traveling nurses, right? So these are people that will rent the property for, like, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, stuff like that, right? Up to six months sometimes, okay? They're looking for furnished rentals, right? So all the hospitals, they're over in this area, right? This is where these kind of people want to be, right? So location, location, location. The location itself can't get any better. And then the property, it's pretty badass, man. It's, like, 15 years old. You don't have any lead-based paint stuff to worry about. Fresh, open concept. It's going to be great for those traveling nurses. Also great for people vacationing, right? We literally are providing people everything they need, right? This sucker checks off all the boxes. No work needs to be done to it other than furnishing it, right? We got to furnish it. And then other net. By the way, this is up by the rooftop deck. You got the nice little wet bar in here, right? Tell me that's not badass for uh, parties when people are vacationing, man. That's pretty slick, okay? All right, just a ton of other new construction, as you can see, right? The neighborhood, it don't get any sweeter than this, folks. And, of course, we got a garage. There's another shot of downtown. Nice 15-year roof, in-suite laundry, blah, 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 blah. All told, it's a bad-ass house. But you ain't going to live in the sucker. Now, I mean, of course, if you want, when you uh, do want to come into town, you could, of course, stay in your own home. But... How badass it is, if it doesn't make you money, who gives a shit, right? So let's talk about the money. Here's the deal. We got to do some work, or I got to do some work on your behalf. Because right now, the seller's asking $499,000. It's been on the market for 138 days. That is an eternity in Tremont. For a property this fucking cool, there's a problem. It should have sold immediately. Problem is, the seller got too cocky, thought they could get the same price that the brand spanking new ones are getting, right? The ones with tax abatements. They couldn't. Seller tried listing it for like five fifty or something in there. Uh, I don't got it on the chart uh, on the page anymore, but the seller originally listed this at like I think it was five sixty four nine. Okay, way too fucking high. Then they dropped it down to four ninety nine. Still too high in my opinion. So I got to get in there and try to beat the seller up on your behalf. I want to try to pick this up for you for 450, 450. Now, that's a good starting point. We could probably go up and get like 10, 15, 20K if need be, right? But I think 450 is where I want to start this. And then no repairs. We're going to need to put in 25K worth of furnishings, right? We want to get that premium uh, furnishings, make it badass, sleep as many people as we can so we can get a maximum amount of average nightly rent, right? So 475 would be the all-in investment. Then what we're looking at is if we were to uh, uh, rent that bad boy at 400 bucks a night, Right, that'd be twelve thousand four hundred for the month, hundred forty-eight thousand eight hundred for the year. But don't get freaking crazy. Don't pop champagne bottles on me just yet. We ain't renting the sucker every single day. That's not how it works, right? We're looking at an average occupancy of sixty-two percent. Yes, it's going to be more in the warm months. It's going to be less in the cold months. It's going to be higher when we get those nurses and people like that in there for 30, 60, 90 days at a time, okay? This is average. It's all should, is anticipated to fluctuate out to the 62% occupancy, right? So I believe you should be making after everything, my team operating it, my team being the super host, my team doing everything on your behalf, Bookings, showings, fixing repairs, cutting the grass, the whole friggin' shebang, right? It's all listed on the chart. You should make an average of four thousand one hundred fifty-seven seventy a month or almost fifty K a year, right? Now, this is where it gets super juicy, right? This is why real estate's so banging. This is why it's so awesome how cheap 
mortgages are these days, right? Are all in investments 475. All you need to put out of this out of your pocket is 137 and a half, right? That's going to be 112 and a half for your down payment, and then of course, you can't get your mortgage lender to pay for your fucking furniture. So you got to tack that on there, right? So 137 and a half. That's all you got to pay, and then we're going to get the bank to give you 337 and a half. That is going to net out to what I believe should be a 24% cash on cash return. And you are in one of the neighborhoods in Cleveland that should see the most appreciation because this is an A-grade neighborhood. They're still pumping out new construction into this area. Uh, as a matter of fact, the person that bought this last bought it for 384. This neighborhood is going to keep going up, right? Keep going up they're continuing to just inject money and money into this area so cleveland not necessarily a market uh that you should look at for speculation tell you that right now if you're looking to be a spec investor cleveland's probably not it okay but if you're looking for cash flow you're looking to get in at a budget that's where you should be cleveland here's the deal if you're going to invest in cleveland though right not all neighborhoods are created equal if we're hoping to get some type of appreciation this the friggin' neighborhood we're gonna try to do it in. Let me know what you wanna do. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.